Hello today's video we have the following content. Tragic death in the bed of a scandalous porn star, 50 years later, an authoritative doctor finally found the truth about Bruce Lee's death. At 11 p.m. on July 20, 1973, Bruce Lee, who had the healthiest body in the world, suddenly died in the bed of Hong Kong porn starting pay at the age of 33. Although according to the official medical report at the time, the cause of Bruce Lee's death should be cerebral edema caused by a painkiller called equagesic. However, to this day, such a statement is not enough to convince the public. For 50 years, there have been many speculations about the cause of death of this Chinese kung fu movie star. Some people say that he died of drug allergy, some say that it was a conspiracy to poison, and even worse, some people made a fuss about his ambiguous relationship with Ding Pei during his lifetime, imagining a lot of boudoir affairs, and believed that Bruce Lee's death must be related to Ding Pei. When interpreting the same artistic image, a thousand readers will have a thousand hamlets in their hearts, not to mention the bizarre death of a world-renowned martial arts superstar like Bruce Lee. But in general, apart from those groundless guesses and assumptions, the reasons for the untimely death of this martial arts genius can be divided into the following categories. Everyone knows that Bruce Lee is 171 centimeters tall, but it is incredible that such a small man could train his body to 72 kilograms in the 1960s when the fitness industry and nutrition knowledge were not well developed, and maintain a low fat rate like a bodybuilder all year round. In fact, Bruce Lee did not have any special obsession with the so-called body fat rate in his early years. As a crazy martial arts fanatic, speed training is what Bruce Lee pays special attention to when practicing basic skills rather than big muscles. According to Shi Jian, the actor who plays the villain M.R. Han in the movie Enter the Dragon, Bruce Lee's exercise time is very fragmented due to his busy work. But once he had free time, he almost never missed any time for training. For example, he would occasionally lift dumbbells while writing a manuscript, or practice his reaction ability while watching TV or playing with cats at home. These were all very common things in his life. And a more exaggerated example is that in order to train his sensitivity and insight, Bruce Lee even often randomly selected others to interact in various public places. That is, he asked the other party to make an awe sound or make a corresponding reaction when seeing him make a certain gesture. In Bruce Lee's view, such a repetitive random challenge can keep him highly alert to the surrounding environment at all times, so that he can perform stably in martial arts competitions. In addition to making Kung Fu practice a part of life, when creating film and television works, Bruce Lee never simply regarded himself as a martial arts actor. From Fist of Fury, which made him stand out, to Game of Death, which was only three quarters completed before his death, Bruce Lee always believed that he should be a martial artist first and then an actor during the filming process. In order to convey his own ideas, Bruce Lee deliberately added a lot of martial arts ideas every time he created a character in a movie. For example, in the movie Way of the Dragon, there is a particularly classic clip, Bruce Lee played a Hong Kong country youth named Tang Long who was provoked and harassed by a group of hooligans who were looking for trouble while working in a restaurant. Seeing his colleagues in the restaurant being knocked down one by one by the hooligans on the opposite side, Tang Long was eager to fight and decided to go forward to fight. He did not use his homemade darts or his proud nunchakas, but only posed a waist asking and dragon swinging posture, and the group of troublemakers were convinced. And this posture that made the enemy surrender was also a kind of martial arts fighting that belonged to him. The ancient said that everything has a limit, and too much is as bad as too little. After all, the human body is not a natural structure born for martial arts. Bruce Lee was reluctant to waste a second throughout his life, and he incorporated highly intense training into every minute of his life. This led to his premature death due to excessive physical exhaustion. This result is not surprising. If not knowing how to relax properly is the chronic poison that led to Bruce Lee's short life, then his excessive obsession with muscles is the accelerator of his death. As we all know, Bruce Lee suffered a lumbar injury in his early years, which made him afraid to train with heavyweights after 1970. For such a small man who needs to rely on close range form to win, not being able to train with weights is definitely a major pain point in his career. Especially after the battle with Wang Zeming. The king of actual combat in the martial arts world, Bruce Lee became more determined to change the direction of training and shifted the focus of training from speed training to size training. Anyone who has seen Bruce Lee's half-naked photos knows that as a martial arts superstar, Bruce Lee has well-developed muscles in his upper body. These muscles are beautifully lined, enough to rival those of today's bodybuilders. But friends who are familiar with fitness should know that if you want to train such a body of muscles, 
It is impossible to do it without special low-fat training. So how did Bruce Lee train this body of muscles in the absence of professional fitness and the inability to do a lot of weight training such as lifting iron? The answer is to use electric shock devices to stimulate muscles. According to Bruce Lee's senior brother, when Bruce Lee was filming the movie Fist of Fury, his figure looked healthy and strong, but his lines were not so outstanding. When he played the Shaolin disciple in Enter the Dragon a year later, his body had undergone earth-shaking changes. At that time, many people questioned Bruce Lee's big guy and believed that his muscle lines were probably caused by the electric shock muscle machine. In addition, a Japanese company that produced muscle oscillators also had close contacts with Bruce Lee during that period, so it is not surprising that the outside world would raise such a conjecture. Although the question of whether Bruce Lee's developed muscles are related to the electric current treatment device has not been confirmed by people so far. But what is certain is that any way of crossing the river by feeling the stones will have a 50% chance of failure. As for whether Bruce Lee's body would be damaged if he really used the electric current therapy device to stimulate his muscles without professional guidance, only Bruce Lee himself knows. Overwork. As mentioned earlier, Bruce Lee's weight has always been around 145 pounds, but in fact this statement is not accurate. Indeed, although Bruce Lee's muscles were not outstanding during the Fist of Fury period, he had bright eyes and youthful vigor. At that time, his health was so good that people would believe that he was 18 years old. And only two years later, this young man who was originally full of youth showed a decline early on. Although Bruce Lee's fighting skills were still excellent under the blessing of uninterrupted martial arts training at that time. But in terms of human spirit, Bruce Lee not only completely lost weight, but even his mood became very irritable. In the subsequent autopsy, people were surprised to find that this martial arts genius with the healthiest body in the world had actually dropped to 114 kilograms. According to traditional martial arts, this means that Bruce Lee had been over-consuming his essence in the years before his death. So, how did Bruce Lee consume his essence? According to Bruce Lee's wife Linda, Bruce Lee was demanding perfection in everything he did. When filming a movie, he not only played the leading role, but also served as the martial arts instructor for others. In order to make the work the best, he would even take the initiative to plan and shoot the plot. Obviously, everyone has only so much energy, and it is impossible to do everything perfectly, not to mention that like Bruce Lee, he was doing the work of several people at work, being an actor, a martial artist, and a husband and father when he returned home. Because he was worried about not having enough time, Bruce Lee got up very early every morning, did a lot of things, and could only sleep for three hours, so he usually worked until 4 p.m. and was in a bad mental state. Because of overwork, Bruce Lee even often had headaches and fainted during the filming of Enter the Dragon. Once, Bruce Lee suddenly fainted when he went to the men's restroom in a restaurant. After Paul Heller learned about this, he recommended his familiar cardiologist and internal medicine doctor to him. Although Paul Heller knew nothing about Bruce Lee's examination results afterwards because of the medical confidentiality agreement. But from Bruce Lee's sudden words Uncle John, I won't live as long as you when chatting with Gigi on later, we can roughly infer that perhaps from then on, Bruce Lee had been worried about his health. As a wife, Linda had repeatedly warned her husband that he should not live so tight. But Bruce Lee did not agree with his wife's advice. For him, work is a kind of enjoyment. Only by constantly setting goals and completing them one by one, such a life is meaningful. And for a person like this who overdraws his physical and mental strength without limit, perhaps death is the only way to make him stop. The influence of drugs. During the autopsy of Bruce Lee's body, the forensic doctor found the following three drugs in his stomach, aspirin, painkillers and a small amount of marijuana. According to the official autopsy report, the cause of Bruce Lee's unfortunate sudden death should be the drug sensitivity caused by painkillers and the cerebral edema. As for the claim that drug sensitivity caused death, we cannot refute it for the time being because it is the authoritative conclusion. However, when talking about the impact of drugs on Bruce Lee's body, in addition to painkillers and aspirin, which has the lowest risk to the body, the official mentioned marijuana and unmentioned steroids have also become the focus of public attention. Marijuana, also known as Shansi Miao, is an annual upright herb. Everything has two sides, and marijuana is no exception. In medicine, marijuana is often used to reduce swelling and disperse knots, and it is very effective in moistening the intestines and removing toxins from the body. However, once this double-edged sword is used in excess, it will cause a series of adverse reactions in the body. In mild cases, there will be uncoordinated movements, decreased appetite, and increased heart rate. 
In severe cases, there will be disordered thinking, self-awareness disorders, dual personality, and even hallucinations, delusions, and paranoia. In the long run, it will destroy the body's functions and cause an irreversible blow to human health. According to some details released by Bruce Lee's wife Linda, Bruce Lee did take a small amount of marijuana because he practiced too hard. But in her opinion, her husband did this to exercise his body so that he could maintain a state of excitement during practice and work. These doses were not enough to cause his death. Let's not talk about whether marijuana caused Bruce Lee's death. Some Dragon fans analyzed that Bruce Lee's temperament suddenly became very irritable before his death, and even moody. He threatened to kill his friend Bob Wall just because he was scratched by a bottle on the set of Enter the Dragon. The reason why Bruce Lee's temperament changed drastically may be related to his excessive use of banned steroids in the sports world. According to the Hong Kong medical community, it is impossible for Bruce Lee to shape his body into a fat-free state through physical exercise without the influence of drugs. The only explanation is that he may have taken stimulants similar to steroids. In Schwarzenegger's heyday, steroids were not actually bad drugs in the bodybuilding market. It can even be said that because steroids were newly invented at that time, people were not familiar with their efficacy and usage methods, let alone explore the harm they would cause to the human body. If during this period, Bruce Lee took this drug indiscriminately without knowing the contraindications of steroids in order to maintain a healthy body, then the forensic doctor would give the explanation that he died of drug allergy during the autopsy, which would be considered a pass. Of course, in addition to the steroid hypothesis, Bruce Lee took a large amount of second-generation sleeping pills due to overwork, which led to his poor sleep quality in the later period. This can be confirmed by Bruce Lee's wife and attending physician. Chen Human once said that Bruce Lee himself had epilepsy. Sometimes, when an attack occurs, there will even be spasms and convulsions. A martial arts actor who relies on sleeping pills to fall asleep, sleeps only four hours a day, and has a busy family and work schedule, and even needs to use marijuana to maintain his nerve excitement, no matter how good his innate conditions are, he will eventually be unable to resist the passage of life. Moreover, from the perspective of innate conditions, Bruce Lee, who was born with mild flat feet, does not actually have the advantage of practicing martial arts. Conspiracy and Poisoning As the saying goes, where there are people, there are rivers and lakes. From the perspective of the interests of the parties involved, whoever benefits the most from Bruce Lee's death is the most suspicious one. Undoubtedly, as the owner of Bruce Lee's last film Enter the Dragon before his death, Golden Harvest boss Zhu Wenhui, is undoubtedly the most suspicious object. Speaking of Zhu Wenhui, we have to mention Bing Pei, a Hong Kong porn star under his company who has close contacts with Bruce Lee. When talking about the relationship between Bruce Lee and Bing Pei, although Bruce Lee once said in front of his wife Linda that he and Bing Pei were just a fleeting relationship, only like, not love. But it is undeniable that Bruce Lee spent the last moment of his life in Bing Pei's bed. Time goes back to 1.30 p.m. on July 20, 1973, 10 hours before Bruce Lee's death. Invited by a friend, Bruce Lee's wife Linda decided to go shopping. At the time, Bruce Lee was reading in the study. Seeing his wife preparing to go out, Bruce Lee told her that director Raymond Chow would come to his house at around 2 p.m. to discuss the script outline of Game of Death with him. Linda didn't care about her husband's working from home. After all, this was a very common thing in Bruce Lee's previous work. But what she didn't know was that a woman named Ding Pei would be involved during this period. What was even more unexpected was that the kiss goodbye that afternoon was the last farewell between the couple. At 2 p.m., Raymond Chow arrived as scheduled and came to Bruce Lee's house to discuss work. At 4.30 p.m., the two came to the home of Ying Pei, another actress in the play, to continue discussing the outline of the script. At 7 p.m., the three of them had agreed to have dinner at the Japanese restaurant downstairs at the Hyatt Hotel. But when they were about to leave, Bruce Lee said he had a splitting headache, so with the help of Ying Pei, he took an aspirin, took off his coat and lay flat on the mattress in her room to rest. Considering that he had to pick up the male movie star George Lazenby at around 8 p.m., Zhu Wenhui had to go to dinner alone, leaving Ding Pei to take care of Bruce Lee. Zhu Wenhui originally thought that Bruce Lee's headache was just a minor symptom and he would recover after a short rest. But who knew that around 8.30 p.m., he and George Lazenby had already met, but Ding Pei called to say that Bruce Lee was not awake yet. And this state lasted until 9 p.m. At 9.45 p.m., worried that Bruce Lee was not feeling well, Zhu Wenhui rushed to Ding Pei's residence to try to wake him up. But no matter how he pushed, 
Bruce Lee's face was ready and he was always in a state of sleep. You have to know that Bruce Lee is a martial artist, and his body is usually sharp and alert, so it is impossible for him to sleep for so long without any reason. Thinking of this, Zhu Inhui felt that something was wrong, so he immediately contacted Bruce Lee's personal doctor. But strangely, this a British doctor who had never lost contact with the doctor turned off his phone on that day. In desperation, the two had to find Dean Pei's personal doctor Zhu Bahui. At 10 o'clock in the evening, when Zhu Bahui arrived at the scene, Bruce Lee had no vital signs. At 11 o'clock in the evening, Bruce Lee was sent to the hospital under the arrangement of Zhu Inhui and others. Linda, who received the message at that time, rushed to the hospital earlier. But unfortunately, at 11.30 in the evening, Bruce Lee was determined to be dead under the doctor's examination. Since then, a martial arts superstar has completely fallen. Regarding the suspicious points of Bruce Lee's death, in addition to the unexplained loss of contact with his attending doctor, according to the cleaner downstairs, around 7.30 that night, before Zhu and Hui and others left, he had seen several tall men entering and leaving Bruce Lee's resting room, and several people had a fierce quarrel inside. Then there was even Bruce Lee's high-pitched scream. However, Ding Pei denied the cleaning lady's statement on the grounds that she had been watching TV in the living room at the time and had not seen the strange man. However, a strong international martial arts superstar died in his lover's bed after taking a pill, and the lover had been watching TV in the living room for more than two hours. These elements had up and inevitably make people suspicious. After Bruce Lee's death, Ding Pei was deeply troubled by the outside world's doubts. Not only was she hit hard in her career, but even her marriage with her ex-husband Xiong Huaqiang ended in failure. In order to find the strength to support herself, this once beautiful Hong Kong actress converted to Buddhism and began to practice at home. In her opinion, only in this way can she repay the debt she owed to Bruce Lee in her previous life. In the speculation that Bruce Lee was poisoned by Hong Kong figures, some people also refuted it as Bruce Lee. After all, from the perspective of family roots, Bruce Lee's father Lee Haquin was one of the four famous clowns of Cantonese opera with Lee Aziya Hui, Ban Ryan, Ye Fu Ro and others. His uncle is a lieutenant general in the army, his cousin is the Macau gambling king Stanley Ho, and even his apprentice Yan Jinghe is a veteran of the Chinese American Martial Arts Association. For a man like this with powerful relatives and friends, and disciples and friends all over the country, which Hong Kong gang dares to act rashly against him? However, whether it is a coincidence or a conspiracy theory, the many rewards promised to Bruce Lee during his lifetime were not fulfilled, and even the company allocated to him was a rented shell company, Golden Harvest. After Bruce Lee's death, it made a lot of money by producing the documentary The Life and Death of Bruce Lee and sorting out his unfinished film Game of Death. Boss Zhu, who claimed to be Bruce Lee's best friend, was so shameless to eat the blood of the deceased after his friend's death, which inevitably makes people question their friendship. It is said that the most unlikely thing is often the truth. When exploring the truth of Bruce Lee's death, some careful people have discovered that Bruce Lee had purchased three huge insurance policies one after another since the beginning of 1973, and the beneficiaries of the insurance have not been made public so far. From the $5,000 insurance at the beginning of the year, to the $200,000 life insurance in February, to the $1.35 million life insurance at the end of April. All signs indicate that Bruce Lee started to prepare for his own death a few months before his death, as if he was about to die. According to Bruce Lee's partner Robert Wall, the two met once in a villa at the Beverly Hills Hotel before Bruce Lee died. At that time, judging from his face, Bruce Lee's physical condition was not very good. Not only was his face gray and his eyes dark, but he even seemed to have lost 20 pounds. What shocked him even more was that when the two met, Bruce Lee seemed to have completely forgotten what they had discussed on the phone before, and repeated it to the other party over and over again. These contrasts made Robert exclaim, Oh my God! Bruce Lee, what happened to you? Water intoxication. In 2022, 50 years after the world superstar died tragically in the bed of the scandalous porn star, a research team from Spain gave a new explanation for the cause of Bruce Lee's death. In the view of these authoritative doctors, Bruce Lee's real cause of death is likely to be water intoxication. Water intoxication, in clinical renal medicine, is also called hyponatremia. That is, when the human body drinks more than 4 liters of water a day, if the kidneys cannot excrete too much water, it will cause excessive drinking and urine excretion to be inconsistent, so that the serum sodium concentration is lower than the lower limit, causing brain edema. In severe cases, death within a few hours is entirely possible. 
The conjecture that Bruce Lee may have died from drinking too much water was further confirmed by Bruce Lee's lover Ding Pei and his wife Linda. According to Ding Pei, Bruce Lee took a lot of water when he took painkillers before his death. Although this extreme thirst is indeed a bit abnormal, Ding Pei believes that these symptoms are just thirst caused by taking prescription drugs. Therefore, she did not stop it at that time. In Linda's description, Bruce Lee did have the habit of eating liquid food. In order to maintain the perfection of muscles while maintaining function, Bruce Lee tried to replace staple food with liquid food such as carrots and apple juice in his daily diet. Although he always felt a headache after drinking these foods. Although the authoritative doctors in Spain were very sure about the conjecture of water poisoning. However, the public did not buy it. After all, in their opinion, who in the world can drink water to fool himself to death? However, judging from Bruce Lee's strong temper throughout his life, this conjecture is somewhat credible. History is a little girl. Maybe there are very few people who know the truth of all this, but the truth will be buried forever, maybe no one knows the truth, and the truth will never be found again. But no matter what the truth is, this martial arts fanatic who brought Eastern Kung Fu to the world of martial arts is worthy of our respect. Thank you for watching the video, please leave your opinion in the comments section. Don't forget to press the channel subscription button. If this is the first time you watch a video on the channel,